the Vikings have won their first two games of a season. For the first time since 2016, with Sam Darnold throwing multiple touchdown passes in consecutive games. I say I'm going to start with you. Which 2-0 team is least likely to make the playoffs? The Vikings, the Bucks, or the Seahawks? I'm going to say the Vikings, man. Look, 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 man. Look, fellas, man. Look, yeah, yeah. hey. I, I know that what we see from Sam Darnold is impressive. I get it. I understand. But but I will remind y'all that week one was against them damn Giants. That's like a bye week, okay? Hold on. Steve, I knew that was coming. Stephen A., the Seahawks played against the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. And you're going to immediately point out that Darnold looked good against the New York Giants. He just looked good against the San Francisco 49ers, one of the more elite defenses in football. It was in Santa Clara. Yeah, Darnold threw a pick. He didn't see Fred Warner. Fred Warner's one of the best linebackers of all time. I mean, the dude's just a legend. But outside of that, Darnold was very, very good. He made some big-time throws. He finished the game with an impressive stat line, 268 yards, two touchdowns, 17-26. Uh, he also did add in 32 yards with his legs. Justin Jefferson goes down in that game, and Darnold still plays well. That throw to Naylor is one of the best I saw a week, one of the best I've seen in a long time. Darnold looks extremely confident, man. I mean, pointing out the Giants, like, what? Who have the Seahawks beat? That, that's impressive. The Patriots and the Broncos are going to be at the bottom of the NFL this season. Like, I'm just, I'm very confused right now, man. But continue, Stephen A. All right, so you get a, you, you, you beat them week one. You did beat San Francisco in week two. I got to give it to you. Christian McCaffrey didn't play in that game. Debo Samuel's going to be out. You know what I'm saying? He's not 100% healthy. We get all of that. Yeah, but what is the correlation of Debo? Well, Debo did play in that game, and he played extremely well. But um, no Christian McCaffrey, why would that matter? Because he's not on defense, right? And Jordan Mason went 20 of 100 with a touchdown. Let's be real here. A Niners running back, I mean, this is the easiest – team to play for if you're a running back because Kyle Shanahan's the best coach in the NFL at drawing up run plays and how many times has a Shanahan rusher gone over a thousand yards a different one even his father it was the same thing so being a running back in this scheme is not the most difficult thing in the world right Eliza Mitchell before the injury looked electric uh, and Jordan Mason again who was undrafted I want to say I'm like 99% certain he was undrafted yeah, he wasn't even drafted, and uh, the dude has been with the Niners for a couple of years now, and he steps in and back-to-back 100-yard games, um, and he scored too. So, I mean, no Christian McCaffrey. If this was a game just talking about Vikings-Niners, right? Yeah, I'd be like, that's definitely fair. Christian McCaffrey would, would have made a difference, obviously. But in terms of talking about, oh, well, I don't believe in the Vikings over the Buccaneers and the Seahawks because of Sam Darnold, well, it wasn't like Fred Warner or Nick Boza weren't playing. The Niners had a healthy defense, and Sam Darnold played exceptionally well. That throw to Justin Jefferson, that throw to Jalen Naylor. The only reason this game looks close is because Aaron Jones lost a fumble on the goal line, right? And I'm recording this on Friday, guys, by the way. So the game was on Sunday, so bear with me here. But I just I don't agree with this take, um, especially the reasoning behind it, right? If you pick the Seahawks and the Bucks over the Vikings, okay, but... To say that you believe in them over Sam Darnold, I like Geno Smith, right? I like Baker Mayfield, not to put words in Steve in his mouth because he hasn't said that, but I mean, he's saying you're not sold on Sam Darnold. Okay, so you're sold on Geno Smith. Baker Mayfield, I think it's fair to say I'm sold on him. Most people probably are at this point, but the Buccaneers, I do think have a better chance to make the playoffs than both of those teams. But in terms of who has the most upside, man, I think it actually is the Vikings. I think the Vikings have the most upside with this defense and this rush. With these weapons, uh, you got Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler, 10 for 82. What a game by him. That's 8.2 yards per carry, obviously. And then Sam Darnold, I mean, he's got all the tools to be a big-time quarterback in this league. I mean, you look at his size, 6'3", 225. He's athletic. He's quick. Good release. Uh, just moves in the pocket. He's got a big arm. Darnold was the third pick in the 2018 draft for a reason. Uh, I mean, he's a big-time uh, potential player. And Baker, speaking of Baker, he leaves the Panthers, becomes very good. Sam Darnold leaves, becomes very good. I think Bryce Young is next, but that's besides the point. It's a little bit off topic, but uh, Stephen A, continue. But in the end, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I saw that chip pass Sam Darnold through to Justin Jefferson 70 yards in the air. It was very, very impressive. I also saw Sam Darnold over the previous six years. I'm not a believer as of yet. Oh, my. Okay. 
I, I just see it's the arguments that get me right. No issue whatsoever picking the Vikings last, but if obviously from a debate standpoint, because you can debate it, they're you know they're all two and O teams. But to say that I don't believe in Sam, Steve, why are we talking about the past, right? Sam Darnold is not the same quarterback right now than he was with the Jets or the Panthers. You are what's around you. No quarterback in the history of football was able to win on their own. Was able to win in a bad situation. You've got to have a coach that believes in you, you've got to be protected, you've got to have weapons, and your defense, you can win in the NFL, I think, with a bad defense. It's not going to be easy, obviously, but, I mean, if you have an elite offense like the Vikings do with Kevin O'Connell and these weapons and this scheme, and then your defense is, like, bad, maybe, like, 22, 23, I think you can still win in nowadays NFL. But the Vikings, I mean, they have an elite defense. Their offense is putting up a lot of points. They scored 20 eight against the Giants and then against the Niners. I how many do they score? Was it twenty three at the top of my head? Yeah, twenty three. So that that's pretty good, man. That's pretty damn good. Um that's gonna put them I don't know exactly where that ranks, but probably anywhere from ten to fifteen. So um and obviously we know that you know, the the Giants game, uh I mean it's the Giants, so it's not like they were trying to run up a score, but and then the Niners game again that fumble, right? So you're looking at 23 versus 30. If you had, they had scored that touchdown, we'd be having a much different discussion, I feel like. But certainly they didn't. So Sam Darnold spent two games, don't get me wrong here. He's got the Texans and the Packers and the Jets. Um, so he's got three teams with very – I'm not going to say the Packers have an elite defense. I think that would be false. But the Texans, to me, do have an elite defense. And the Jets have an elite defense. And then the Packers is a divisional rival on the road against like in Lambeau Field so that that's going to be a very difficult game so Darnold's gonna have to prove himself some more but from what we've seen through two weeks I genuinely believe the Vikings have more upside than the Bucks and the Seahawks right I think the Bucks yeah they beat the Lions it was kind of a sloppy game but I don't know if the Bucks are going to be able to to make a lot of noise in the NFC playoffs but I think the Vikings can and I think my biggest thing is just with how good their defense is they have the best defense of that bunch um, they've got the best offensive mind in Kevin O'Connell. I just look at the Minnesota Vikings, and if their biggest concern is Sam Darnold, then that says a lot about how good they are. Because Darnold this season, I mean, he's fourth in QBR, four touchdowns, two picks, 476 yards, puts him in the top 10. He's used his legs well. And on tape, he's always going to look better than his statistics. So statistically speaking, that's still really good. But his tape doesn't lie. Everyone says tape doesn't lie. Tape, tape, tape. Well, Sam Darnold's tape has been spectacular. And if he continues to do this, which I think he will, the Vikings are going to make noise in the NFC. And it's all about upside. I said all summer, I yeah, I think the Vikings are going to finish last in this division, but their upside is through the roof. Like, if they finish first, it's not the craziest thing. Like, I, I think I said in one video specifically, and I quote, the Vikings will finish first or last. There's no in between. Like, the Bucks, I do think, are kind of like a dark horse team in the NFC. But... I just like the Vikings more, and uh, we'll see who the, the real Vikings are these next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, they beat the Niners, that's great, but now beat the Texans, right? Now beat the Packers on the road, now beat the Jets.